And once again, if you're taking it before you go to the gym or whenever, that just may make you more motivated because you look in the mirror like, oh man, who's a, who's a big boy? Time a minute at the board, a hole here. Thank you so much for taking a second and clicking on my video. No one ever says that on YouTube. And I'm like, you know what? There should be more appreciation. If you don't click, this whole thing falls apart. I sometimes videos don't do very well. And I have breakdowns. Oh no, I've ruined it. And then hopefully I try and get things back on track. Today, we are going to talk about everybody's supplement known as creatine, also known as the product that people who do not lift weights are into fitness go, oh, is that steroids? And you're like, yeah. Holland and Barrett. I don't know if they have that in in America. Holland and Barrett's just like a nutrition shop over here in the UK. Yeah, they're just they're just shelling out some steroids for the hell of it. I get it all the time. All the time. Oh, it's cool. It's just creating. Everybody, calm down. The reason for that is because it is banned in some sports. But I don't want to talk about it today. That's not the point. However, the key to all of this is it is the number one requested supplement in the world in terms of YouTube comments. Everyone's like, should I take creatine? Should I take creatine? Is creatine going to be bad for me? Is it good for me? Is it going to turn me into the Hulk? Is it going to turn me into Arnie? So look, I've broken it down. I'm going to tell you four reasons that creatine is amazing for lifting weights. And I'm going to give you four reasons that it sucks. Will there be more in each category? Yes, but these are the ones that I have decided to focus on today. And then you can make your own damn mind up. All right, we'll start with the good stuff, the positive stuff, positive Pete. And the number one reason you want to be taking creatine is because when you do start supplementing with it, you are going to increase the natural levels that already exist within you of phosphocreatine. That is basically a form of stored energy in the muscle cells. And it plays a role in fueling high intensity explosive workouts e.g. lifting weights. So let's say usually when you're doing some bicep curls, you get to like eight, nine reps, you're like, oh, I'm struggling so much. Supplementing it with creatine may get you to nine reps. It may get you to 10 reps. It may allow you to add an extra one kilogram on either side of the bar because you're going to increase your ATP levels, which ties into all of this. And it's just going to give you a little more of a boost. That is what it does. So it's naturally occurring within you anyway. And of course, if you then supplement with it, you're going to push those levels in a positive direction. And that's why everybody gets a massive kick out of it. Because yes, it can make you stronger and other things that I'll talk about in one second. It's as simple as that, right? Are there other things that we can get into scientifically? Yes, but I don't believe that my audience is into that kind of stuff. Other YouTubers and articles and fitness people will be able to advise you on that. But that is what it does at a base level. And that is why in terms of Anything else is the reason you want to take it because it's going to give you a percentage increase in the gym. But it's not like 400% increase. We're talking about tiny margins. However, the good thing about creatine is it's actually a supplement that does what it says on the tin. There's so many other pills and stuff that said, oh, magic will happen when you take this, and it doesn't. There's no magician. There's no rabbit coming out of a hat. There's no abracadabra. There's no alakazam. Creatine will actually back up what it says, which ties into another reason. Reason number two you want to take it is that there are studies, science, wow, the major thing that says it will help you recover faster. That's right. They've got a bunch of athletes in a room, and they put them through, through vigorous paces. Some of them were on a placebo. Some of them were on creatine, and they noticed that any damaged done to the muscles after inflammation from working out or whatever, actually got back to zero, whatever the, you know, the level would be, the balance would be, when they were taking creatine. So you see what we're doing here. You can be stronger in the gym. You can have a little bit more energy in the gym, little percentages again. But also, after the fact, even if you are taking it on non-training days, it's going to help you with your recovery. And the faster you recover, the faster you can go back in the gym and do all this stuff that we do until the day that we die. And number three, and a reason that so many people want to take it, is that it will make you look bigger for a little bit. Because essentially, when you take creatine, and yes, there's more to talk about this later, it sucks water into the muscles. That's what it does. It sucks it up like you're having a, a delicious drink. And of course, if your muscles are filled with water, you're going to walk around and you're going to look bigger than you actually are. And you can use that to trick people and you can use it to essentially be a lie. Who doesn't want to be a lie? We always want to be a lie. The key is... It will go again. Of course it will. If you develop actual muscle, that's not going to go away. But any the effect of creatine when it comes to the individual is different. Some people blow up like a balloon and some people just have, like I say, small touches here and there. But it will do this. And once again, if you're taking it before you go to the gym or whenever, that just may make you more motivated because you look in the mirror like, oh man, who's a, who's a big boy? And reason number four is that, yes, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, it says that it can help bone density. So your bones are going to be stronger. It can, help, it can help brain function or so they say. It can help people with diabetes. Again, these are all studies that have been done, but they're not sort of, you know, tried and tested. Well, they are tried and tested. It may not work for you. These aren't, for example, if you had a problem with your brain, your number one thing should be, oh, I'll take some creatine, but it may help. And also some people also say that it increases IGF one, 
which is growth hormone in the body. If you hear people taking human growth hormone externally, it means that they're trying to increase that hormone. So it can help you do all of these things. And it is a really, really good supplement. I take it every single day, five grams, going to talk about it, do not worry. And I find that it does all of these things. But I don't find that if I ever come off it, all of a sudden my life is doom and gloom and I'm in hell, I'm rolling around like, oh, I can't believe I came off creatine. It is not that powerful. It's incredibly good and it's absolutely excellent maybe if you're more of a... Uh, you, you're above novice, so you're more of a medium advanced lifter and you're looking for those, uh, like I said, there's just tiny, tiny little extra steps. I'd absolutely advocate for you taking it. I just sometimes think people sing its praises too much because they're trying to sell you some kind of, again, magic juice that just happens to have creatine in it with a bunch of other stuff and they portray it like, if you do not drink this, the worst things are going to happen, which brings us to the worst part. So number one on the worst part is we talked about how creatine, you know, pulls water into the muscle cells. Well, that could bloat you. Simple as that, right? The more water you're holding on to, that's all bloating is. Some people, once again, blow up like a balloon. So they blow up like a balloon, but they blow up like a balloon. Some people are like, I don't even know what you're talking about, right? And there are certain uh, creatine supplements out there that if I use, yeah, I get massively bloated and it sucks. Because while you will look bigger in a shirt, if you then whip that shirt off and you look a big bloaty mess, you're like, well, why am I, why am I even going to the gym? I may as well eat 72 pizzas. Then you eat the 72 pizzas and because you did it too close to the creatine being out of your system, you just look like a whale and then you're massively sad and nobody wants you to be sad. So, you know, that may not be something that you want to do. For example, if your goal at the moment is to lose as much weight and fat as possible, you don't want to be looking bloated. It's going to, again, it's going to upset you. You're going to lose your motivation and it's just, it's just going to be downhill. So surprise, surprise, it all depends what your goals are. And following on from that point two on the bad list is that, you know, it just, it will upset some people's stomachs. It just will. The reason I think it's important to go over that is I'm sure you've Googled it and researched it online. But some people say that it will upset everybody's stomach. I read an article before I did this video. 100% of people have an upset tummy. No one says tummy. I didn't say tummy. You know what? Screw it. I like saying tummy. But it, it can happen. Yes, of course it can happen. And if it does, that just sucks. But that's just life, right? Some people can't use certain creams on their skin. Me, I've talked about it before. If I drink caffeine, I break out in spots. Do I want to drink coffee? Of course I do. It's like some free drug somebody wants to give you. But... It's, that's just life and you just have to accept it. But that's why I wanted to really stress and make it important that it's not going to affect where you want to get. Maybe you'll be a few days behind somebody else, but you're still going to get there. And number three on the bad list is that if you just walk into creatine blind, you will still find products out there that say, oh, when take creatine, you've got to take it for two weeks, you've got to preload it. You've got to have 15 grams of creatine a day to get it in your system. What kind of nonsense is that? I'm sure some people will disagree. When I first did creatine supplementation, I did that. 50, whatever the hell it was, it ruined me. I felt sick. I felt awful. And for years, I was convinced I was allergic to creatine. But it's not. You just need five grams a day. That's it. I, I have to hold on. Some, number four ties into this. But to me, five grams a day is fine. It's a nice little supplementation. More is not necessarily more. Sometimes less is more. But five grams is perfect. You want to try doing it? You be my guest. I'm just letting you know what happened to me. And yes, the last reason, which ties into number three massively, is that there's about 56,472 different versions of creatine out there. And you're like, what, what, which one am I meant to take? So I'm not going to get into all of them. I'm just going to tell you it from my end. If you trust me, awesome. If you don't, that's awesome too. Creatine monohydrate, five grams a day. That's it. Don't do anything else. There are uh, sort of creatine blends that you can buy. Try it. Give it a whirl. But I just don't think, I think it's unnecessary. I think that it's um, increased prices on those things to, again, trying to make you spend more money. I buy a bag of creatine monohydrate. I put five grams. Uh, I take it in my intra-workout shake. But you can take it whenever the hell you want. Take it when you first wake up. Take it half an hour before you go to the gym. Take it when you get back to the gym. There will be pros and cons, once again, to all of it. But it's, it's, what a waste of life, man. Do you really want to worry about that? With all the stresses and problems you have, do you really want to add, what time should I take my creatine? Just supplement with it, or better still, don't. But again, five grams of creatine monohydrate a day. That is what I have taken for who knows how long. Sometimes I'll drop it just for a month or so. Don't know why. I don't really think you need to cycle it, but I do because I think, meh, saves me a little bit of money too. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, try not to get too swept up in the creatine madness. This to me is all the information you need to know and everything else is kind of supplementation anyway. And there you go, boom, creatine done. We can put it to bed and I can point people in this direction when they should ask. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, what else do you do? Go to the description. There's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's Patreon, there's merchandise. You can get involved there. There should be another video on the screen now. 
click it. Maybe you want more of the bald a-hole in your life. My parents don't, so you can then balance that out. It's a joke. My parents are very lovely people. Have great days. I'll see you soon.